I'm here to talk to you about the problem of slavery. It didn't end in the 1860s. It's a social malady that's with us today, and it's increasing in its scope and virulence. The desire to enslave our fellow man is unfortunately intrinsic to the human character. It has been with us since the beginning of time on every continent and in virtually every culture, from ancient Egypt to Babylon to Greece and Rome, Africa, Asia, Europe, and the United States. Germany and Japan openly practiced widespread slavery only 50 years ago, and the Soviet Union until less than a decade ago, China even today. It's a disease of our human nature, and yet people are under the impression that it no longer exists. I say to you that in a subtle form, it exists in America today, and it's becoming less subtle and more manifest. Madison Avenue has just cleaned it up a little bit, dressed it up in new words. The slave master is now a big brother, someone to protect you, someone to confide in. But it's all the same. He owns your life. Now, this may sound far-fetched, but I think I can prove it. When the IRS allows you a tax deduction, they and their congressional collaborators and the media call it a tax subsidy. In other words, they designate it as a gift to you, a subsidy. The only way they could conceive this terminology is by presupposing that they, i.e. the government, own all the money. Their view is that they're entitled to it all, that which they allow you to keep is their compassionate and generous gift to you. How can this be? You create the money by your efforts, your sacrifice, your creativity, your risk-taking. So how can it belong to them? It's very simple. They own you. They own everything you produce, your money, your house, your thoughts and ideas, your children. If you go to a foreign country to work, you still have to pay the U.S. income tax. You could dig a hole in the middle of Siberia and they'd be entitled to a cut of your wages because in their minds, under their law, they own you. They create arcane and esoteric laws to criminalize you. You may try, but you can't obey them. You can't even understand them without a lot of professional help. You have to run around slavishly collecting little pieces of paper, receipts. Seven years of detailed financial records because you might be called on to give an account of yourself to the big boss man. And if you've made a mistake, he can take everything you have. He loves it that way. That's total power over you, slavery. I don't remember when we the people signed over ownership of ourselves. It just gradually happened by them taking more and more of our freedom. But here's the worst part. It's really only just begun. In this modern age, the information age, getting your money is not enough, even though money, don't let anyone deceive you, is the material source of your freedom. Now, however, they want your mind. If you deviate in your thinking, if you commit one of the 10,000 taboos and they perceive your actions as a threat, They'll come out and kill you. It was the thought police who killed the children at Waco and Ruby Ridge. Neither David Koresh nor Randy Weaver, whatever things might be said about them, had ever mugged anyone, robbed a 7-Eleven, or committed forcible rape or murder. But they did have unorthodox views, and therefore it was necessary to round them up and deal with them. Whatever their crimes were, they could have been arrested and tried openly in a court of law. But that was not the aim of certain factions in the government. These statists wanted a massive demonstration of force to show who was boss. The penalty for resisting is death. After all, we're not free. We belong to the government, and deviant thoughts will not be tolerated. In the aftermath of the horrible Oklahoma City bombing, government propagandists tried to intimidate the people into silence by recklessly linking criticism of the government to acts of murder. Some people ask, how can you fear your government and claim to love your country? Our response is, how can you love your country without fearing your government? Who else holds a counterfeit license to kill, incarcerate, and confiscate for non-crimes? Remember, America is about liberty first and last, not obedience to bureaucrats. The Washington power clique wants you to shut up, get in line, do what you're told to do, and most outrageously, think what you've been told to think. We have hundreds of politicians and thousands of lobbyists crawling all over Washington, thinking of ways to control you, to extend their will over you, to subvert your freedom and replace it with their will, to capture, that is, to steal your life force. And so we should all be very angry, because anger is the engine that drives our will to resist. And without resistance, without awareness, they will take it all. That's not just politically perverse. It's a sin against mankind, because freedom is actually sacred. Drop an ant into a jar and seal the lid. It will spend the rest of its life trying to get out. 
It has nowhere to go. But it wants to be free. That is its nature. It's the way every living thing is made. Once, a long time ago, I saw something at the zoo, a wolf lying in its cage. I thought about how this magnificent animal was the end product of millions of years of evolutionary design. A nose that could detect the faintest scent, ultrasonic hearing, eyes that could see in the dark, teeth and jaws capable of crushing thick bone, heart and lungs that could run him for hours in a sub-zero blizzard. And yet, there he was, lying forlorn and full of despair. He was well fed. He had a clean habitat and water and medical care. So what was the problem? He was sick with the knowledge that his wonderful powers would never be exercised again. And so he lay there, his head on his paws, staring blankly ahead at perhaps some imaginary forest that he could never reach because there were bars around him. They had not killed his body, but they were destroying his soul. God gave Adam and Eve freedom, even though he knew they would invite death into the world. That's how important freedom is in the divine scheme of things. And that's why we urge you to defend it always.